a sign that I could not have imagined would come true in our life. This sign shocked me more than anything else and people aren't even paying attention to it, which is the worship of Lot and Uzza in the Arabian Peninsula. There are people right now that are worshiping Lot and Uzza, very small minority in the Arabian Peninsula. Look, when I read this, studying Islam, like the Arabian Peninsula becoming green, like that's something we're seeing, sign of the Day of Judgment in front of our eyes that a generation ago could not have imagined, but I could imagine it. Like there being Christians and Jews, atheism in the Arabian Peninsula, like I could imagine, who would worship Lot and Uzzah? Like that was dead, finished. Like they're pieces of rock. There's no church for them, nothing. Like, you know, the Christians give a lot of money to convert people. Atheists have like desires, like go do whatever you want. But who would worship Lot and Uzzah? Another sign that has come true in front of our eyes is the competition of Bedouins that come from illiterate backgrounds, competing in building tall buildings. You know, I think seven of the top tallest 10 buildings in the world right now are in the Khalij and Arabian Peninsula, Burj Khalifa and Burj Dubai and Real Tower. And like, you're like, whoa, like, this is crazy. Like this sign is coming true in front of our eyes. But I could imagine that, right? Latin, what's that? I've seen pictures right now online of people in Arabian countries with statues, personal statues, not just in museums and things, posting that they're worshiping them. Now again, I'm not saying it's a big number, I'm not saying it's gonna grow, I'm not saying it's a majority, but just the fact that it happened, Rasulullah SAW said the Day of Jinn will not come until people go back to worshiping Allah and Rizal. I said this sign I could not imagine, and it's come true in front of us. This obviously proves the Prophet of the Prophet SAW, but this one is specific because he was the one who abolished it exactly. to begin with. For him to say he's gonna come back, is why would he even say that? At a time when they destroyed those statues in the Arabian Peninsula, it finished. It's not like, you know, Christianity, okay, maybe it was there in Europe, so they could try to come back, yeah. Hinduism, in India or something, but with nobody there, it didn't make any sense. And that sign has come true in front of us and nobody's talking about it. So another one that I found interesting is the Euphrates River. So the Hadith doesn't specifically say it's going to dry. It says it will reveal a mountain of gold, which right. indicates it drying. Right now, Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Iran are all in conflict over the Euphrates River. Most people don't know that. Mm. Most people don't know that. They've been in conflict since like the 60s. So now think about it. We know it's drying up. The Iraqi ministry, they're saying that it'll be fully dry by 2040. Now, what I mentioned earlier, it doesn't have to be fully dried for the mountain of gold to appear. Even according to the Hadith, it just says that it'll reveal it. They're already in desperate times. Half these countries are war torn. Of course, if the water supply is done and there's gold, the people are going to fight over it. Of course. And it's so profound because at this time in the life of the Prophet, these lands weren't Muslim lands. So, what does he say at the end of the hadith? He says, if any of you see it, basically don't fight, don't take right. anything from it. He, he's not commanding the Christian and pagans, the Muslims. Yeah. The Muslims. So, it's so deep. If you look mm -hmm. at the prophecies that have come true, they're undeniable. Even if you look at Constantinople, which is Istanbul today, the Rasulullah ﷺ told us we're going to be victorious or we're going to take it. Now, that didn't happen for generations. Muhammad al-Fatih time is way later. If he had said, for example, Tibet, for example, yeah. right? You know, you could be like, hey, that never happened, right? But Alhamdulillah, it happened. And, you know, when the Prophet ﷺ talked about the prophecy of being victorious over the Persians and Romans and taking Constantinople, you know, this was during Khandak. And at Khandak, Muslims were at the verge of being wiped out. The Battle of Khandak, people don't realize the importance of it because all these Arabian tribes of the Mushrikeen had come together and the idea was to attack Medina and genocide, finish off the Muslims. It wasn't like Badr, Tabu. This was supposed to be the end of Muslims. And the Muslims were financially hurting. And that's why the famous narration in the Kutub of Tariq about tying rocks to stomach and so on from hunger. And so at a point where you're looking at being wiped out, you're telling your companion that a time will come that you will destroy the two biggest superpowers and Istanbul will be Muslim, which at that time was unimaginable. When there's a prophecy in hadith, believe in it. You don't understand how? Wait and see. You know, we have Iman bil ghaib, but those prophecies coming true, it's amazing. And then many of them are coming true in our time. Like this tall building, Sahaba didn't even understand the concept of a tall building. And it happened from those same Bedouin tribes. So how do we not see the truth of Islam here? One of our very good brothers, may Allah reward him, he brought me this information and I started researching about scientists that are talking about how the earth's going to fall off its axis. And if that axis flips, the suns will rise from the West. And they're saying it's inevitable. They, they said inevitable? Yeah. Oh my God. It's just a matter of time. You know? we, people need to repent because when that happens, repentance is Toba's no finished. Yeah. Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and guide us. You know what's crazy? When the hadith mentioned it, a lot of us didn't take it serious. And when a scientist mentions it, that's a good point. Oh my God, SubhanAllah. Anytime you find something in the Quran or Sahih Ahadith, take it dead serious. So the Prophet is what? Like 
12 for 12, 50 for 100 for 100. I mean, I can't. Look, I taught the Sira. The number of miracles and the number of prophecies, unimaginable. See, it's not just like things like the sun rising from the West. There are little prophecies. Also, some would say, you know, you're going to go here and you're going to find this person and they're going to say this to you. And then those things happen. Even when he talked about how you'll be able to travel in safety between this city and that city and things like he told Aisha radiyanha about what's going to happen in the future and you will go here and dogs will bark there and like things that happen exactly every time. You can't guess and get things right every time. You know, Nostradamus yeah. or whatever that dude is, yeah. you know, he'd be like, and an eagle will rise from the West. We're like, oh, it's talking about America. You're just giving meaning to something that doesn't. And he'll get so much stuff wrong, but they'll just focus on like the 10 things he got right, you know, yeah. the guesses or whatever jinn he was working with. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the Quran, every single prophecy comes out the way it is. 100%. That Specifying can't be guessing. Like time and place yeah. and circumstance. And it's amazing. SubhanAllah.